Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. And today we have with us Adam Adams, who is the founder of GrowYourShow.com. Adam, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. How are you? Hey, doing really good. Um, I'm excited to talk about um, growing your show because guess what? There, there are so many people with a podcast or thinking about uh, starting a podcast, and you got to get the word out. So I want to uh, learn from you and see what your experience has brought you. But get us started with a little bit of what your background is and then what led you to focus on uh, the podcast market. Yeah, my my background in, uh, is all about – entrepreneurship. My dad was always an entrepreneur and a real estate investor. So I started real estate investing in college and just following in my stepdad's footsteps, everything that he told me to do, except for some of them, he told me to save 10%. He was pretty wise, but I was pretty young. But uh, I did start investing in real estate and starting a couple of companies. And they worked out for the most part really well uh, around I would say um, the crash of 2008, nine area, uh, it yeah. was very challenging. I'll, I'll be honest about that for sure, both in my real estate uh, ownership at the time and in my business, it was a, it was a challenge. But um, that's really where my background comes from. And why I started into a podcast was when I was doing more real estate syndications, they're called, where you're raising uh, money, you're attracting a lot of capital. And in, in doing so, I, I, I knew that there's, there's some type of KLTI blueprint, know, like, trust, and then invest. And I knew that I'm not really going to be able to go and ask people to just invest just because I have a good deal, like getting and proposing to somebody that just is cute. I haven't even talked to her yet. Um, yeah. So I just thought I've got to I've got to get known, and so I started podcast in 2017, and it blew up, and we had you know we became a top one percent show, and and uh, I ended up selling it because I had helped a few people launch podcasts, and so just a couple years ago, I started helping people with their podcasts, and it was working out. I did it for free, and then I. And then in last year, I said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start Grow Your Show and, because I'm going to niche down and just help people have bigger podcasts because it really mattered to me. And what I noticed was if you don't have that marketing piece, if you don't really push it out, it's not if you build it, they will come. It's not if you build it, they will come. If you build it and you market it yeah. really, really hard or have a team like mine do it for you, then they'll come, then they'll be listening, then you'll get your influence. So that's kind of where, where that all came in. I love it. And um, I know that you've got a, in the marketing world, you've got so many options that can really frustrate you with the shiny objects, you know, Ooh, this is good. And Ooh, look, I should do this and that and the other and chat bots and Facebook ads and all of these things. Right. Um, but I really feel like there are some core pillar foundational things that should always be done. Um, and when, when you kind of pull back and look at the 30,000 foot view and we think about like a small business owner, entrepreneur, um, what are some marketing uh, pillars that we should focus on? Well, number one, you should not sell, sell, sell. You should educate and you should use content marketing. Okay, good. Check. Heard of that before. That's great. Well, now what kind of content should we use? Well, that becomes foundational because if you do it the right way, now, when you do these other things like a Facebook ad campaign or whatever else that you're thinking of doing, now it's built on the foundation of your brand being teaching and an educator. And I feel like, you know, you, you should be publishing, you know, your articles, your blog posts, whatever, you know, written content you want to think of that way. And then you should be using your thought leadership. And there's two paths we can go. And you could, don't have to go far online or social media to go. You must be doing video. Well, video is wonderful. But here's something that I personally see. Um, so many of the people out there that are putting out videos, they 
they use certain players, and one comes to mind, um, Wistia, and I know that it's probably a setting, but um, if, you, if I'm watching a video, let's say that you're, you're teaching on something, and I put that in my browser, and now I want to listen to what you have to say, and now I want to just be doing some other work and have it go in the background, Wistia cuts it off. And it's like, hold on, I don't, I really don't need to, to watch Adam's lips move to hear what he has to say. So that's frustrating. So I really feel that now the other path of getting your thought leadership out there is audio in the podcasting world. So when you then have that, now you are on people's phones or MP3 player or online or whatever. And so now you have to think about this. What is it that you as a business owner or an entrepreneur need to get out to the world so that your target audience fully understands what you do to help them solve the problems that they have? And sometimes they don't even realize the certain problems. So it's all an education, right? So talk a little bit about how you would recommend a small business owner or entrepreneur to use a podcast to help to kind of cultivate that in their business. Well, if they truly understand that perfect avatar, the person that should be doing business with them, if they, if they know what they're struggling with and going through, that's going to be the first step. Understanding who you're even attracting. You also want to understand at the same time what you want out of this. And I know it sounds so selfish and, and so mean and, and greedy, but we've got to make a living. We've got to put food on the table. And we either, we either have to make money from our podcast or we have to feel really good about launching a podcast. You've got to get something out of it. And so you want to identify those two things. Who am I attracting and what do I want to happen? Just like you, you said a, a moment ago. Then what you're really going to be focusing on is how can I deliver a unique proposition? And you, you mentioned that as well. You're, you really talked about that unique proposition. What makes you stand apart? What are you doing differently? So instead of just being like, hey, I, for, in my business, for example, instead of me saying, hey, I, uh, I can help you edit your podcast. People are like, well, okay, a lot of people can edit my podcast. It, but if I go in and I say, this is what it looks like to work with us. You push record. And we do everything else. Not to overwhelm you, but here's a few of the things that we're doing, just to name a few. We are, after you push record and it goes to the cloud, we take that file, we edit it, we mix it, we audio engineer it, we equalize all the sounds between you and your guest or you and your co-host. And then we cut out some ums and uhs, not every single one. We still want it to sound natural, but we don't want to annoy your listener. We, we do we do all the editing. We write your show notes for you. We put the bumpers in, intro, outro. We even email your guest. We even email the guest for you. You don't even have to follow up the guest because we have an email that we go in, at, that we're team at yourbusiness.com, and we email the guest and we say, thanks for coming on. Here's some marketing material that we, my team created that you could share the show. And so it makes it so... Your show gets ranked in the top 10%. You actually have listeners because if ranking isn't a prideful thing. It's like if you're in the bottom 90%, then nobody's going to hear you. It's just how it is. It's like the Pareto principle, how the rich just yeah. keep getting richer. It's, if you're in the top 10%, you're going to keep getting forced up and up and up. And if you're in the bottom 90%, then people are not going to see you. There's just too much other content out there. So our unique proposition is getting you all of the listeners that you want and making it as easy as you push and record. Now that I can say that, now that I can share that's our unique proposition, we don't just edit your podcast. We don't just help you market your podcast. We have guarantees and we take off all the stuff and make it easy on you. You've got to do the same thing with your listener. When you're on your podcast, when you're sharing content out there, you want to think of it in terms of what they're going through. Instead of saying, I'm the best at getting you ranked, or I, I can edit your podcast. It's more about, you don't want to focus on your podcast. You don't want to have to stress about this, and you don't want to have no listeners to speak to. Let us take that off your plate, and we can guarantee the results. You know what I mean? It just, you've got to have the messaging clear. And then yeah. after that, 
Yeah, go ahead. Oh, could it continue? I want to hear after that. That's that sounds uh, good. After after you know that you have your messaging clear and compelling to support your listener, now the time is that you're going to get your branding going. So you're going to come up with a title of your podcast that's going to capture them. Not a funny, uh, quick, witty, easy title. Not just a simple title. It's a compelling title. You got to figure that out. You, you got to have we solve this problem on your artwork. So you get all the artwork. You get your intro, your outro uh, recorded with a voiceover artist. All of that stuff. And if if you're working with us, shameful plug, right? If you're working with us, we do all that branding stuff for you. But if 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 you're doing it on your own, you just you got to. Those are the steps that you'll have to take. Now you're pressing record. These are some other things to think about. Every guest that I have on my show supports my avatar. They don't support me. They don't, I don't, I'm not just interested in the topic. Your avatar is interested in the topic. Because if you start having people on your show, and this happens in the multifamily industry, where the person really wants to attract capital, but what they're having on their show is how do I find a deal? So they're trying to attract passive investors, but they're asking the wrong questions. They're asking, how do I find an apartment community? A passive investor could care less how, how it's found. They only want to invest the money. So you need to be really cautious with every episode, every question, every guest needs to benefit the avatar. A couple other key points that are going to be beneficial is one, in the beginning of your podcast, you want to have an episode zero. It's called a trailer episode. And this needs to answer four main questions. And we can get into that if you want. But it needs to answer four main questions and be under 10 minutes. And then I like to suggest that you have a mini course, a free course, which is episodes one through five or one through seven, where it's, it's you diving in with your avatar to help them get a result. I love doing a short uh, trailer and then going straight into this mini course for the first few episodes and then going into however, however you're going to do it. If, if you're going to interview other people or if you're going to do it on your own or if you're going to do a hybrid where some episodes are you solo, some are with the other person, the benefit by having the other person is that they might share the episode and grow your show for you. You're hacking into their network of people that are following them already. The benefit of you getting on one-on-one -on -one with them is now you're the expert. Now you get to pour into their business. You get to serve them, and they get to hear it from your mouth rather than just the guest's mouth. It's always, it's, it, I hope that makes sense. The last thing that I will say is on the intro, and the outro, you need to be, it needs to be super short and concise on the intro where it's 15 seconds or less. And everybody else is talking about sunshine and roses, flowers and, and rainbows and, and unicorns. Oh, this is the benefit of, of, you know, this is a great warm show and you're going to get warm feelings. That doesn't sell. I'm sorry. You need to actually, on the first 15 seconds, it needs to be something like, you don't want to mess up with your podcast. You don't want to get stuck in the bottom 90, 90 percentile and not have any traction. So that's why you need to listen to this podcast so you can get in top 10% and make your life easy. So you, you've got to give the pain point in your first 15 seconds. And then the outro, the only thing that I'll share, and then I'll turn it right back over to you for the outro. It needs to be a call to action. Pay close attention to the smallest word that I said. It was the word a, uh, the letter A alone. It needs to be a call to action, a single call to action. I actually just today before this call have worked with three clients and all three of them had up to six calls to action. I want you to subscribe. I want you to share this episode. I want you to give me a five-star rating and a written review. And I want you to, and it just keeps going and going and going. It's not beneficial. You're confusing people. They're tuning out. What is one thing you want them to do? 
if it's to share the episode, maybe you could say something to the effect of, if you have a friend that could use this, um, this message, let's get this message off to them so that they can grow too. So all I want you to do, it's really easy, push share on the episode and go ahead and send it to them and you and I can grow this movement where it's less about you, more about the person, more about the idea of what's happening. And remember, a singular call to action is always better than multiple. I, I love it. <clears throat> Couldn't agree more. In fact, the, um, I have in front of me a copy of my latest book on Amazon, and it speaks to that exact point. The title is Brevity Plus Clarity Equals Authority. And I feel like um, that everyone listening to this right now can uh, imagine or recount a time they've emailed someone and said, hey, um, hey, guess what, Adam? Um, here's the update of what you asked for. Hey, can you get me this? And oh, oh, by the way, also, what about the follow-up for the last time we spoke about? And they email back as a response with one of the answers. And you're like, I, cl I clearly asked you two or three things right in there. People are so we are so trained because of our society of give me the answer now text message instant message um you know bots and and google and let me if i don't know the answer so let me google it i feel like we just need you know if you want to get three things from someone literally email them once and then a few hours later email them again and you're going to get that so to your point about having a singular call to action is spectacular and very very important because guess what what would happen if that call to action was, you know, you know, example A? Well, in two, three months, you could change that outro and have a different call to action. It's not like you're tied to that for the next, you know, 100 episodes. So I think that's a really, really huge point you bring up. Hey, what about um, – what do you find when you're working with people or hearing people talk about their podcasts? What, what's a, a common mistake that people are making? Um, yeah, the most common mistake is definitely ready, fire, aim. They've been yeah. told if you build it, they will come. They've been told don't overthink it. They've been told um, they've been told don't worry about the mic, and you know you, you can just do this from your phone or whatever. And my my thought is when you're jumping into a podcast, there, you know, first impressions are lasting impressions and your absolute best avatar are going to be the first people that start listening and, and coming in. And if it doesn't gain traction right at the beginning, then you will lose. There is the first eight weeks of your podcast launching that you need to really be critical about marketing and branding. And uh, people are just thinking, just because it's on iTunes now, I'm, I'm being broadcast to the world, is what they say. It's on iTunes, and so millions of people, hundreds of countries that can, can, can hear me uh, speak. But what is interesting is iTunes does something called uh, split testing, A-B testing. Social media does it as well, and the best marketers in the world do A-B testing. Well, social media and your podcast, they do this. Apple is putting your show next to somebody else's show. Somebody else's show is, is gaining traction because they're doing the hard work. And now it's going to be able to get it in front of people because they say, all right, something about this podcast is good. So I'm going to put it in front. So one of the biggest mistakes that I would say is people thinking that it's okay to just ready, fire, aim. If you build it, they will come because then they just hear crickets and they don't actually get listeners and they wonder why. And they wait and wait and wait so long that it's now it makes it even more of a challenge to be able to hack into Apple's algorithms to allow them to get in front of people. So I'd say that's probably the biggest mistake. The second biggest mistake, and I'll say it really briefly, so because your book is all about brevity, is <laughs> if you <laughs> – if, if you – don't serve your avatar on every single episode, you're likely to lose your avatar. And so you playing around and doing whatever you want uh, on your podcast, if it's not serving your avatar, you're going to lose them. You know, it reminds me of a stat of um, if you do not stay in touch with your email list, you lose 10% of your influence every month that you don't communicate with them. 
And I feel like the same exact thing is, it applies to what you just said there. Um, I just, I just think that when people see a brand and face it, if you're just you yourself and you, you're a brand still, but people see a brand and they do not respect that brand as much. If you're all over the place, if you're talking about this one day and that the other day and this, and even if it's in your deliverables. And I found that in my business, um, I started my marketing firm 10 plus years ago and was all things to all people. If you need a text message, marketing, SEO, social media, email, I could do it. But guess what? you were a jack of all trades. And when I refocused my business five years ago to just focus on authority positioning, now people go, Ooh, I think I need that. And I go, yeah, here's the two packages I offer. And, and just really, really um, uh, clarifies it down. So really great point that you bring up there. Um, let's wrap up with this, Adam. What's the best way that people can, you know, learn more? Because when I, when they're hearing this going, I think I might need that podcast and I like done for you and I want to learn a little bit more. What are some ways they can reach out and connect with you? Yeah, let's, uh, instead of some ways, let's uh, give one way a singular call to action. If, if, you, if you have a show or if you're about to have a show, you need some help getting off of a plateau or just getting off the, uh, you know, your first footstep, go to growyourshow.com. It's simple as that. You can go to growyourshow.com and schedule a call with me and see, see what it is we offer and how we can help. Excellent. Nice, simple, clear, and concise. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been really a, a pleasure tra- talking with you today. Ah, same, same here. Thanks, Adam. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.